द सिंपलेस्ट एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ अ योगिनी इज दैट शी इज द फीमेल काउंटर पार्ट ऑफ अ योगी like a yogi a yogini practices the path of yoga as a bodily and a spiritual discipline in time she becomes a master in the science acquiring certain powers that set her apart from others if the 64 yoginis are so powerful then why is it that their temples remain deserted till this day why are they looked upon with so much of fear why are people hesitant to visit them even in the day time let alone at night Why don't people chant their mula mantras and their gayatri mantras so frequently? I who always mention the mula mantras and the gayatri mantras of every god am extremely hesitant to talk about their mantras because they should never be chanted without the initiation of a guru. And if you have started chanting the mantras of the 64 yoginis then you have to keep on continuing them. This is not a phase that you will start and then end eventually. They will not spare you if you incur their wrath. It is like a maze. You decide when you will enter. They will decide how you will come out of that maze, when you will come out of that maze. And rest assured, when you come out of that maze, you will be entirely transformed. Why are they regarded with so much of fear? What is the mystery surrounding them? Most importantly, who are the yoginis and why are the 64 in number the origin of yoginis can be traced when they were the grama devis the kula devtas who safeguarded the villages the tribal cults and its inhabitants in due course they were consolidated into groups of 64 81 8 16 sometimes 1000 and tantricism was included into their puja vidhis that gave them an elevated status that heightened their status among the deities the skanda purana and the chandi purana state that the yoginis were created from the body parts the nose the ears the navel the sweat even the anger of devi in order to kill mahisasura astrological works mention about eight yoginis who controlled the nine grahas among which mangala was the good graha associated with good things good fortune sankata was the bad yogini concerned with two grahas tantra yoga describes a special set of seven yoginis that govern the seven chakras there are 83 yoginis that form the shri chakra with goddess tripura sundari in the middle the lalita sahasra nama mentions a specific name of the goddess as the one who was served by 64 groups or sets of yoginis the kali tantra states ma kali or shama as being attended by 1000 yoginis out of which 12 were extremely close companions of the devi but they are not the 64 yoginis the 64 yoginis are related to shiva and shakti The majority of the texts recognize the 64 yoginis as patron deities of the Kaula Marga, a secret system of Shaiva Tantra in which the adherents or the Kaulas used secret practices of including Tantra and Yoga with left-hand practices of awakening the Kundali and obtain enlightenment. The majority of information of the about the 64 yoginis can be traced from the Kulanava Tantra, a text that is composed as a conversation between Shiva and Parvati, where it is clearly mentioned that the yoginis were protectors of the Kola clan, and any follower of the Kola Marga was a favorite of the yoginis. Likewise, anybody who disrespected the Kola followers, who disrespected the Kola Marga, was eaten up, literally eaten up, by the yogis. Now, let me start with the line that there is a hierarchy. At the topmost are Batu Bhairava and Kala Bhairava. After them come the Ashta Bhairavas, who have emerged from the eight directions of Kala Bhairava. The Ashta Bhairavas combine with the Ashta Matrikas. to form the 64 yoginis and the 64 bhairavas worshiping whom gives one different forms of materialistic ambitions spiritual ambitions financial ambitions and any other siddhis that they desire for now it is going to take the whole day to talk about the 64 yoginis and the 64 bhairavas let me just elucidate briefly about the first three yoginis and bhairavas in the pdf mentioned below we have mentioned about 
or we have mentioned who exactly are the 64 yoginis and who are the 64 Bhairavas. But let me tell you about the first three yoginis and Bhairavas. Now the 64 Bhairavas were guardians of different direction and their worship resulted in elimination of external and internal en enemies, obstructions or any hurdles to your path. The first of the 64 Bhairavas, Nilakantha Bhairava, who purifies the throat chakra for clear communication. He transforms poison into wisdom. Nilakantha Bhairava is worshipped alongside with Yogini Jaya, whose name signifies victory. Yogini Jaya gives the power of eloquent speech. She removes anxieties and fears from our mind. She protects us when we are travelling. Worshipping them together removes impulsiveness, anger and aggression from our minds. If anyone is facing any marriage related hurdles, then that is removed by worshipping Nilakantha Bhairava and Yogini Jaya. The second Bhairava is Vishalaksha Bhairava and his Yogini is Vijaya. Now Vishalaksha Bhairava grants us insight. He helps us see the actual face of the one who is speaking to us. He helps us perceive the truth instead of just moving on superficially on the surface. He also improves our perception abilities. His yogini is Vijaya who when worshipped by the sadhak helps win wars of all kind. She ensures that the sadhak gets victory in all of their endeavours. The third Bhairava is Martanda Bhairava and his concert is Yogini Jayanti. Martanda Bhairava, also referred to as Khandoba, is a very powerful Bhairava that can abolish the sins from our previous birth. His concert, Yogini Jayanti, provides relief from pain and suffering. She also grants the boons of Siddhis, Riddhi, Siddhi, all can be achieved by invoking her blessings. Worshipping them together, gives us the blessings of fertility. It removes the influence of black magic, evil eye and any occult influences that are creating troubles in our life. Which brings us to the next question. Why 64 yogins? Now numbers and numerology have played an important role in astrology and in rituals that have formed the core of Hinduism. The number 4 and its multiples of 8, 12, 16 and 64 have been in prominence in a very early date. There are 8 directions presided over by a Deekpada, 4 cardinal and 4 intermediate. Yoga has 8 stages. The Yogini Koda had 8 branches. 8 was the number of Siddhis achieved through rituals and blessings of the Matrikas, sometimes the Mahavidyas and the other deities. The Matrikas were eight in number as were the Bhairavs. The letters of the Sanskrit alphabet had eight categories. Krishna was the eighth child of Devaki and Vasudeva. He was the eighth incarnation of Vishnu. Because eight was considered auspicious, 64 that was the square of eight was regarded as even more auspicious. The Aitreya Brahmana mentions the 64th step as the last step giving entry into the heavenly world. In Mahabharata, Bhishma Pitama was hit by 64 arrows. Ancient flow plans of temples had 64 squares. There were 64 Agamas and Tantras. There were 64 mantras dedicated to the Bhairavas. Because the Bhairavas gave rise to the Ashta Bhairavas, who in turn fused with the Ashtamatrika, they gave rise to the 64 yoginis. Now, researchers state that there may be more or less, but because 64 was considered a highly auspicious number, they were consolidated into groups of 64. And let me tell you, 64 is not the only group of yoginis. There are 81 yoginis. There are 42 yoginis. Please let me know if you would like to know about them. I will dedicate an entire video about them if you want me to. An important thing that we have to understand while discussing about the 64 yoginis is that maybe they are of prominence because they survived the destruction that happened. There were a lot of things that happened resulting in the decline of the yogini cult. But even before they declined, they were of prominence. There were groups of 64 yoginis that have been described as being guarding the directions 
presiding as a deity. There are yoginis or the chaustat yoginis that can grant you the wishes of ashta siddhi, that can grant you ichha siddhi, vak sakti, everything that you wish for if they are pleased. Most importantly, the 42 and 81 groups of the yoginis or the literature about them unfortunately has not survived. But literature regarding the 64 yoginis has survived till this date because of which we can gather a lot of information about them. So much so that we already know that there are or there were a lot of temples dedicated to the 64 yoginis out of which only four survived till this day. They thrived through the 9th to the 12th century and even the invading rulers were scared of their powers. In simple words, in order to understand the 64 yoginis, we have to understand the Kula Navatantra. The Kula Navatantra, if we want to understand in very basic concept, is like a yin and yang. Like there is a yin and yang in the Kula Navatantra, there is Shiva and there is Shakti. Shiva is Akula. He forms the basis of the Kula Navatantra. And Shiva, in this case, has three Shaktis. Sometimes the three Shaktis are the three Gunas. Sattvic, Rajasic, Tamasic. Sometimes they are part of the letter Om. A, U, Ma, Om. And sometimes they are the three aspects of Icha, Jnana and Kriya. Now, Kula is defined as the state in which the mind and the sight are united. The sense organs lose their individuality. Shakti becomes identical to Jiva by emerging into the object to be visualized. Jiva is Shiva. Shiva gives identity to Shakti. Shiva is Akula, one part of the yin. Shakti is Kula or the other part of the yang. And the three aspects of Shakti, Ichha, will, Jnana, knowledge, Kriya, creativity. When the three aspects of Shakti are taken into Shiva, they give rise to the ultimate enlightenment or Mukti. Shiva in his Rudra aspect becomes Bhairava, who then assumes the aspect of eight Bhairavas. Asitanga Bhairava, Ruru Bhairava, Krodha Bhairava, Chanda Bhairava, Unmata Bhairava, Bhishana Bhairava, Kapala Bhairava and the last Samhara Bhairava. They merge with the eight Matrikas Tata, Brahmani, Maheshwari, Kaumari, Vaishnavi, Varahi, Indrani, Chamunda and Chandi in order to give rise to the 64 yoginis who form the yogini kaula in order to go beyond the Icha, Jnana and Kriya of the Sadhak and awaken the Kundalini. The yogini kaula helped achieve different types of powers. The power to see from a distance, the power to obtain great speeds, the power to become invisible, the power to prevent decay, the power to control creation and destruction. The highest state is obtained when the mind is not fixed on any object of this world. It attains the state of unmana or when the mind is turned upwards and it goes beyond the scope of Kula and Akula. That is the highest point of the sadhak that can be achieved through invoking the blessings of the yogis. Through the yoginis, a sadhak can obtain the state of Pasatobham, a state in which you can make any nets, that is, any ploy created by the enemies to trap you, to destroy you, to kill you, ineffective. The power of Kramanam, that is to enter someone's body, the power of haranam, that is to take something from somebody. Pratima jalpanam, to make an image or a statue speak. Ghatapasa nasphotanam, the power to break stones and pots. These were the basic powers. In higher states, the powers were that of marana, to kill somebody. Uchhatana, to create troubles in somebody's life. Sthambana, the power to stop somebody. Moha, the power to make someone unconscious. Akashti, to attract. Vasham, to control someone. They had the power to make you popular, remove diseases from your life, improve your sense of distant hearing, remove old age, death, decay. They could even help you attain different forms. Now the yoginis that stay in the places of pilgrimage, they are the chief shaktis. They are connected with the pithas like Kamarupa, Uddiyana, that are the current day Kamakya, 
and Odisha, which is what explains the popularity of the 64 yoginis in the Kamakya temple where they are worshipped alongside the goddess. The popularity of 64 yoginis in Hirapur, in Ranipur, inside the complex of the Puri Jagannath temple where they are worshipped along with Mahaprabhu with goddess Vimala. They were also present in the Shetras. That is the places below the Pithas and the Upapithas and some of the Kshetras where they were present were Varanasi and Prayag. The Yoginis were either Sahaja, Kuraja, Antaja, Mantraja or Yogaja out of which the Yogaja Yoginis were involved in yogic practices or they were invoked through yogic practices. The Mantraja Yoginis were invoked through the use of mantras, esoteric mantras. The Sahaja Mothers are the Matrikas who form the innermost circle of the Chakra. And what is the Chakra? The Chakra in the center consisted of the Hrimbija. Surrounding the Hrimbija were eight concentric circles with each circle containing eight Yoginis. Meaning a number of eight into eight or sixty-four Yoginis. Each circle having a special power. The Matrikas form the innermost circle. They possess the power of the Ashtasiddhis. Anima, Garima, Lagima. They had the power of the Ashtasiddhis. The Yoginis of the second chakra had the power of attraction. The ability to project, to subjugate and to break things at a distance. By meditating at the third chakra, the Sadhak got the power to control somebody and to see into the future. The fourth chakra yoginis were in charge of pacifying and liberation. A sadhak by meditating at the fourth chakra and invoking the blessings of the eight yoginis of the fourth chakra could instantly paralyze someone. They could gain the ability of invisibility and the power of bhak siddhi or speech perfection. The fifth chakra yogini had the power to paralyze speech. They also conferred the ability to move like the wind. The powers of Dharma, Artha, Kama and Moksha were controlled by the Yoginis of the 6th Chakra. With the blessings of the 8 Yoginis of the 7th Chakra, the Sadha could subjugate, could enslave. He could be freed from the fetters of Sansara. The Yoginis at the 8th Chakra gave you the power of Ichha Siddhi. That is, you could control death. They also gave you the power of delusion. In order to escape from enemies, in order to escape from any situation or as per your convenience, you could use the power of delusion. A person initiated to the Kula had the blessings of the 64 yoginis. Even if they had sins from being born 400,000 times, they could be absorbed with the blessings of the yoginis. The 64 yoginis were worshipped by the Kola sadhaks in order to protect the Kola Marga or the followers of the Kola path. Temples of the yoginis were built by the Kola believers. In simple words, if you were following the Kola path, then you were a favorite of the yoginis. If you dared disrespect the members of the Kola Dharma, if you dared cause obstacles in their path, then you face the wrath of the yoginis and the yoginis were extremely wrathful deities. There is a reason people are still afraid of them till this date. The text very clearly mentioned that it was the association of the matrikas or the control of the matrikas that kept them under control. Under the inclusion of the matrikas, they were regarded as divine creatures that could confer different kinds of boons to the sadhak. Without the matrikas, they are cruel wrathful, fierce matas who would not hesitate to actually devote you up if disrespected or disobeyed. And there is a very interesting thing associated with the yoginis. They travelled the world in the guise of animals and they were women. Animals and women were very dear to them. Any disrespect, intolerance to either animals or women earned you the wrath of the yoginis 
who would not hesitate to finish you if you did any of these things. In Patara 19 of the Kuranava Tantra, Bhairava speaks to Mata Parvati about the lotus present in the body of the sadhak. When the chakra of the sadhak is illuminated or activated, they find themselves among 16 yoginis of divine appearance. Half of the yoginis wear white robes and the other half wear red robes. The sadhak desiring moksha meditates on the white robed yoginis. The sadhak desiring young age meditates on the yoginis in red. There is also a third color, the yoginis dressed in black and they are the yoginis that reside in our body. There are also yoginis or the 64 yoginis specifically who reside outside. On being asked by the Devi, Bhairava has replied that the essence of knowledge can be found in the house of every yogini residing in Kamarupa, the present house of Ma Kamakya. And with its help, they practice Nigraha, restraint, Anugraha, the practice of bestowing favors and Ichha Siddhis. They can grant you every wish that you ask for if they are pleased. Bhairava has further replied that they move about in guise of animals. They assume the form of maidens, birds and animals when they are under disguise. So you should not disrespect or be unkind to animals or women of any form or you will incur the wrath of the yogis. In the words of Bhairava, yoginis exist as turtle doves, female vultures, female swans, she-dogs, female wolves, hawks, owls, tigresses, elephants and sometimes in the form of horses, cocks, snakes, frogs, stags and scorpions as sometimes it can be observed from their vahanas, especially in Hirapur, Odisha. People afflicted by planets, bhutas, difficult situations, obstructions in all parts, kings, lightning, tiger, lion, ailments, elephants, who are afflicted by anxiety producing things from all directions can seek the blessings of the 64 yoginis and be benefited by them. But there are two rules. Actually, there are three. First, no disrespect to the Kola Marga. Number two, no disrespect or cruelty to animals. Third and most important, complete and utmost respect to females maidens, any maiden or the woman. You cannot show anger of speech or even keep anger in your mind for them. You cannot speak harshly to them. And there is one unspoken rule as well. You should not be egoistic or greedy. The yoginis do not like egoistic or greedy people. These are the basic rules of the yoginis. You do these things and you have their grace. We have to understand that everything that has once started must eventually come to an end. And in case of the 64 yoginis, it was the invasion by the Muslim rulers and rising influence of the Vaishnavites that resulted in a decline of their powers. But even then, there are certain things that we need to understand. First of all, the yogini cult was never popular. They were regarded in awe because of the practices surrounding them. But... The Kolas were a highly secretive clan. Their method of conversing with each other, the puja with these, everything was dead secret. So there is no wonder that in a bid to safeguard the secrets of the Kola, they went into oblivion rather than let out any other secrets that would danger the principles of their dharma. Initially, the yoginis were worshipped through mandalas. After that, their methods of worship were circular temples. Once the patrons disappeared, the temples felt in disrepair and eventually were ruined. But are they ruined? Even now or till this date, people are scared of visiting the remaining yogini centers. In the daytime, you can go there. In the evening, if you venture there, make sure you are someone true at heart who follows the three simple rules, kindness to animals, respect to women, and someone 
without any ego or greed in your heart. The 64 yoginis are youngers of the matrikas and the ashtabhairavas. They have the power to create, they have the power to destroy. But they also have tantric vidhis associated with them. They cannot be worshipped through right-handed methods. Their favourites are rundas and mundas. Rundas meaning headless bodies. Mundas meaning only the head. They were created from the angas of the Devi to kill Mahisasura. The Devi created them in order to kill Sumbha and Nisumbha. They are the attendants of Makali. They are the ones who, are, who surround Matripura Sundari. And in case of the 64 Yoginis, they are the concerts of the 64 Bhairavas. And in today's date, we cannot say that they have been wiped out. There is a Yogini present in each woman. A Yogini that earns for respect. A Yogini that can grant everything that a human desires for. But a Yogini, when insulted, can destroy the very foundations of civilization. The 64 Yoginis may have faded into oblivion temporarily, but they imbibed their powers into each Shakti and gave her the power to defend themselves. Each woman today is a 64 Yogini in themselves who can fight the world. Each woman today is a warrior that can take on the world. And that is what the essence of the 64 Yoginis is. To elucidate the power of Shakti and understand the role of Shakti in completing the circle of Bhairav. The next time you go to a Yogini temple, if you see my video, make sure to invoke their powers. Make sure to invoke their blessings. Most importantly, make sure to go there with a clean heart. Or who knows, the Yoginis will take away your heart. Literally heart.